Hi, this is a minute of Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to show you my worst app. Okay, so yesterday when I was in London, I told you about a video that John from uh, Needless Process did where he he, he tore down one of my apps, uh, Secret Agent Typing, and it was one of these apps that I was just really not proud of. I still am not really proud of, but I left it on the App Store, you know, anyway, and uh, you know, it was really embarrassing to watch. And then I thought, actually, that's like not the worst app that I have. You know, I have a few of them that I'm really that I really don't like. And I thought today I want to show you guys the one that I hate the most, but it's still on the App Store. And I was thinking this could be my new thing, right? Everybody could, anyone could tell you how cool they are, but you know, I want to tell you how rubbish I am. This would be my, this would be my new thing. And I was thinking like, I don't know if you guys remember, like back in school, I don't know if it was the same for you, but like when I was a kid, we'd always have the yo mama jokes, like, you know, yo mama's so fat, you know, all this kind of stuff, or, you know, your family's so poor, you know, that kind of stuff. And I was thinking, we, you know, we could do the same with apps. Feel free to hit me with anything you got. This is, you know, like, for example, you know, you know, you know, your app is so ugly that, uh, you know, people pay to turn the ads on or, you know, you, your app is so bad that, you know, you reward the players by locking levels, that kind of stuff. So anyway, I'm going to tell you about this app called SpyBot Deployment. And now this is one that, to give you an example, to give you an idea of, of when we did this, I started out with my first app, EarSpy. Uh, we did it with an Indian team. Uh, and there's, again, there, when I say an Indian team, this is not to, meant to be a derogatory in anywhere. I've worked with like a lot of really good Indian teams. I worked with a lot of really good developers in India. There's nothing. There is nothing genetic about being able to code, right? There's nothing. You know, it, it's it's not a disparaging thing, right? You you can you can find a good coder anywhere. You can find a bad coder anywhere. These were these were the latter, unfortunately. So so we did EarSpy, and the company that I went with to do, to do EarSpy, they they came to me and said, you know. Eric, we could give you a team of like, you know, four people and it would cost a certain amount each month, but they'll be like dedicated resources. They'll just be working, you know, straight for you. And they were Android developers, but they also were getting into Corona SDK. And this was something that, that I thought, well, this, you know, this would be good that we could do more apps and because I, I was busy contracting, right? I, I wanted to do it myself, but I was busy, you know, and so it was like, I'd ha I, the only time I had was between four o'clock in the morning and six o'clock in the morning. And then when I got home at night, so the, you know, it was just all this kind of stuff. So I had this team and, and we did a few Corona games. We did the learning games, but then, you know, well, you know, my, you know, my kids were like, you, you should make something that's not education. You should make something that's fun. And I thought, we're getting like a lot of traffic now for EarSpy and we're not getting anything for these language games. I mean, we, we get a lot more now, but you know, at the time we didn't. So I thought I, I should make something that when people see the game on the EarSpy page, I want them to see others by this developer and I want them to be attracted to that. So, so something spy related because and, and that's what interests me too. So I went away and I wrote up a spec, just a simple, you know, you know, several pages, you know, 15 levels of a game. And it was like, so I'll, I'll explain it to you and you, you know, so you can get my vision and then you can see you know, how it works in practice. Uh, so, so what I was thinking was, you know, maybe you have like you, you, a little game where you just, you have this pre-programmable uh, robot, like a spy bot and it has to fly into an enemy installation and get a, uh, and get like a, a briefcase or something like that. Uh, and so you have, but you have to pre-program. So you have a blueprint and you have to pre-program it. So, you know, and there's barriers and there's guards and there's all this kind of stuff and it increases with each level. So you, so you'll see the blue screen view or sorry, the blueprint view and you would go, you know, left, left, up, up, shoot, right, down, down, pause, pause, go, whatever. And so you wait, wait for the cameras to go by and everything like that. Right. So that's, that was basically it. And I wrote down, you know, the, I wrote down like a, like a summary. So it was like, you know, a few pages long saying, you know, level one take place in Los Angeles, level two takes place in Chicago, all this kind of stuff. So you'd have like a little background story and everything like that. And, uh, and, and so we did. So, so this project was kind of like doomed from the start, right? So, so in addition to the developers uh, that I got with this company, and again, we, it's, it's difficult to, to say, but you know, when there were, you know, these developers, according to the company, were expert developers. They were not expert developers, they were learning. And a lot of the things were the things that I taught them. I said, I want you to read this, I want you to read that, you know, all this kind of stuff. But I also got a designer, right? And the designer, 
uh, she was good, but she just couldn't, you know, design anything. It was like, yeah, and I think that there's a there's a big description. Like if somebody says they're a designer, they could be like a CSS designer or a web designer, you know, or a or like a graphic designer. And when you're doing a game, you need somebody who can draw, right? So. So she went away and she came back with like a mock-up of the home screen of SpyBot Deployment. And yeah, SpyBot Deployment was the name I came up with. So it was like SpyBot Deployment, right? I thought it would be like really cool. And the more I started thinking about it, the more I started getting excited. The developers were really excited. The designer, she went off and she came back with it, like a home screen image. And it was like, you could not have missed the mark more. I so wish I still had that image so I could show you. But it was like, it was like, it was like, it used every Photoshop filter or whatever you had it had like a grass background with a wood paneling in front of it and a, the spy bot drawn on there uh the helicopter uh with a um which was like a little drone you know but it, and it had a little happy face on it right like a smile and then it had a like two ropes hanging down with a sign uh, with two signs on two panels like two wooden panels and they both said spy bot deployment and i thought it was like it was like you could not have missed it further. It didn't look tough. It didn't look cool. It looked maybe cute, but not not actual cute. And it was just it was so bad. And I just said, this is this is terrible. You know, and there's a certain it's hard working with a designer because if you work with a developer, you could draw a flow chart. You could say this is exactly how it should work. When you're working with a designer, there's a certain you know you have to give touchy feely words and everything like that so it's really hard to find a good designer this is why our designer sandy's been working with me for two years and you know this is you know because when i express things you know she gets what i'm saying and she could come up with lots of different ideas and stuff like that but this this designer that we had with the indian team uh punita she was like a full-time designer for me but you know she I, I, yeah, and I said her name. I just, you know, sometimes I get angry. So, um, so, and so then she went away and she came back with another image a few days later. Uh, and it was like, it was excellent. It was so good. It was like the, exactly what I was looking for. It was like this, uh, this drone, uh, thing. It was like green and yellow and it's, you know, had like lightning bolts in the background, everything like that. And it was like, and I said, this is perfect. Wow. This is perfect. And I thought, I said, did you draw this? And she said, no, I got an image. I said, well, can we use this image? She said, yes, right? And again, I can have this limited amount of time in the morning, so I just ran off. And this is, I can blame uh, this team as much as I want, but I'm part to blame for this too. Actually, I'm probably, you know, the, the buck stops here. So yes, I am to blame. So, uh, so work started on all the assets. You know, the developers are working, everything like that. And it just took a lot longer than I thought it should, right? So, uh, you know, and, and she, so finally, I, th I, th I was thinking about it. I said, that, that image, I said, actually, where did you get that image? And she said, she couldn't remember. So I said, well, I want to I know. So she sent me the URL and I went to it and it was like a toy website. Like it was, there was no way we could use that image. There was no way copyright and everything like that. And I thought, you know, there's, no, there's nothing in there giving any type of permissions. You know, it was like, you know, and I said, and I really, I really got angry. That was when I just, you know, there was a point where like my family was asking me questions like, you know, dad, are are you upset with me? Are you upset about something? I said, yeah, no, I'm upset about somebody thousands of miles away. Uh, yeah, and uh, so we had to redo that front page image. Uh, the, the development took ages. We got like the, the, the bits in it that, that don't look anything like the rest of it. And, uh, you know, and, uh, and we, we redid the front page and uh, let me just show it to you now. So, oh, and by the way, you might be thinking, Eric, if this is so bad, and it's so bad, it's so bad, you know, like I said, I have in-app purchases to turn ads on, right? If it's so bad, why is it still on the App Store? And to be honest with you, I don't really have a good reason. It's, I once read, uh, it was a biography of Walt Disney where uh, it talked about Walt Disney when they were making Snow White, they were near the end of production. So all the frames drawn and everything like that. And then like a new way of animation had come out. So drawing on glass and he had taken all the things they'd done before and just scrapped it and started again you know with the new method and you know his brother roy who was a, the, the finance guy you know was really upset about it you know they were so in debt but he was a perfectionist right i am not walt disney right i once i, I spent so much money on this app you know i put it out there and occasionally it gets an okay review and then i just leave it there and uh, my whole methodology here is and don't think any less of me here is that i stand little to gain and nothing to lose by keeping it on the app store, except maybe, you know, reputation and credibility and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, have a look at, this is it on Google Play. It's, I don't know if it's still on iTunes or not, uh, but this is it, SpyBot deployment. Uh, and it's, uh, 
so if you see here this image here this is the second image it doesn't look anything like the spy bots in the uh, in the game in fact it's a helicopter it was an open source image uh, by the time we got to this I mean this is a something that I thought should have taken about three or four weeks I think we were two months into this and I just thought no we're just going live you know we're going live with this I don't even care anymore right the, this font up here looks like you know some sort of spooky font <laughs> it doesn't really clear you know clay claim you click on start here uh, you, you got the map which looks like you know not nearly as stylized as I'd like. We got the cloud background, which is probably some sort of Photoshop filter. Uh, and then we've got uh, the blueprint. And then these helicopters look like the original image. Uh, so, you know, this, you know, green and, and yellow and everything like that. And you go through and you program it and all this kind of stuff. And then when you click on play, again, it's, it's, I get angry when I think about this game. And, uh, you know, it's not near, it's not what I, what I was uh, hoping to do at all. Right, uh, and then you go through, and you got this um, <laughs> this background, which is some sort of stucco and, and clouds and, and wood for some reason. Uh, and then uh, you've got the, the camera, so it just flies through, uh, and you have to avoid the guards, avoid the security cameras, and get to the uh, to the uh, antidote to the poison. Right, so so that's it. Now this level here. What I told them is that I want it to be tiled. So, like, so in games, if if you don't do games, like, if you're going to do something like this, first of all, you'd want to do something where you on a frame rate, uh, and you'd want to have something that was tiled. So, like, this is perfect candidate. So, you know, you would have like a grid system, and it'd be like, you know, blue, blue, blue wall, wall, you know, or wall, space, space, wall, whatever. So it would just generate, and then you could use a certain amount of resources and just generate as many as you want based on configuration. Right, using a tile system, right? They did not do that. They, they, they nodded and yes, everything was okay. But each one of these things is like, every time they would do a new level, I did 15 levels. We never did 15 levels, right? Uh, is we had, uh, you know, every single one of these is just a, one image, a plain image. Uh, and then they went through and programmatically set the points where the collisions occur. Uh, so it's, um, it's, not very, it's not very good. Um, and uh, you know, and it was it got to the point where it was, we we're two months in. I'm like, this is why you know, are we still working on this? And then I saw how they were doing it and everything. And then I was just like, that's it, we're going live. And I said, well, we still have like <laughs> ten more levels to do. I said, no, we're going live with what we have. Right? I want to see if it, you know, I'm not going to spend any more money on this till I see if it works. So we we released it. I didn't put any ads into it. Didn't, they do no in-app purchases. We put it onto. Google Play and iTunes and uh, iTunes like the first day you know back then iTunes when you put something on the App Store you go in new and noteworthy and you would get like a big boost so we got like like three or four thousand downloads that first day and no monetization and uh, you know and then everybody was really excited and said well, we could add some more levels so we did add a few more levels but it was just it's a ridiculously long amount of time it's so unconfigurable it's um it's not very well coded uh, and but you know it does get some downloads here so if I show you over here the reviews every so often I get bad reviews on this I mean I get you know but then I get some five stars and these could be you know I don't know these could be pity reviews for all I know um, and I get a few and then I get some that are like this where it's just it's like you know hey this is a lot of fun whatever and I just think well if you know if it, you know and I think if, if one person likes it then maybe I'll just I'll just leave it there and see how it goes although you know Sometimes people will go through, like they'll find out I'm an app developer, they'll go to the website and they'll see all the ones and they'll find one that looks the most interesting to them, which is SpyBot Deployment, which the icon does look more interesting than the game is, and they'll download it and go, oh, yeah, yeah, it was okay. So, so maybe one of these days I'll remove it. But, uh, you know, and in terms of uh, statistics here, you know, we get a few downloads each day. Um, let's see here. So, yeah, like hardly any, three, six, two, whatever. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to, to share this with you. Like some of the stuff that I, I do keep on the market just because it does make like a trickle of, of money. And I think, but sometimes I'm kind of embarrassed about it and I think I should remove it. Um, and you know, and it goes up and down every so often I will remove it. And I do remove apps if say, if there's a bug in it and it's something I don't plan on maintaining and uh, and like people are purchasing it and they're they're complaining about it or they're complaining about it too much in the reviews views I'll just I'll just remove it but if it's something like this it's the kind of thing where I can at least gauge if if um, people start downloading it and then put the effort into it that we want to so anyway that was you know 
I just wanted to share that with you today, right? Not all the apps I do are very well. <laughs> you could argue that, and that none of them are very good, uh, you know, but uh, you know, uh, this is what I want you to think, right? I'm still making money from these apps, right? As bad as they are. See, how talented am I, right? So, um, <laughs> So that's it for today, right? I am not an expert app developer, but you know, especially when it comes to games, this was like a really bad experience. This is something even when I when I look at it now, I still get like, you know, I still get angry. I remember the name of that that designer, uh, you know, and and they oh, in the the development company I went with, every so often they'll come back and say, "Hey, Eric, you know, we still got those developers, you know, they they've got, you know, three more years experience now than they did when you worked with them." And uh, my whole thing is that you don't get better as a developer by doing the same things year after year. You get better being a developer by working with better developers. And uh, and even at the time, you know, when, it was, when I hired them, it was like every month they were raising the price. They said, oh, well, they got more experience now. I said, well, dude, I'm the one who gave them that experience. So bad experience all around, right? I'm bringing this up because one day you guys might find this, right? And uh, this is like secret agent typing is bad, but this one is worse. And uh, so anyway, that's it for today. You know, just showing you how, how rubbish some of this stuff can be. And uh, that's it. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Mm -hmm.